If you've just clicked on this video, you might be able to relate to the following situation. You make a big effort and you get up very early in the morning to see one of the most beautiful sunrises of your life or you leave your place at a specific time in the evening to chase one of the most beautiful sunsets in your area. You take your camera or your phone out, take a picture facing the sky with its beautiful reddish, oranges and yellowish colors of the sun, but your foreground stays dark. This happened to me until around a year ago when I started to use the software Lightroom. So today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your sunrise and sunset pictures. So let's get right into it. Here we go, I'm already in the develop section of Lightroom. This is the picture we are going to work on today, which was taken during the sunrise in the northern part of the island Mallorca. Right at the first look, I can already see that the horizon is not leveled and there are two options to, to change this. We can go to the transform panel on the right side, click on auto or level and et voila, Lightroom is going to do it for us. Let's undo this to show you the second option. If you click here on the crop tool, you can choose the crop for the image. Now it's original, let's click on it. You can choose different ratios. For example, the one by one, which is the square, often used for Instagram, four by five as well for Instagram. I think most people use that one because it fills the screen a little bit more. And a 16 by nine ratio, which would be, for example, as a thumbnail for a video. Let's go back and choose the four by five for Instagram. Let's increase the grid. The maximum size and if you click down here under the grid you see two opposite arrows just click and hold you can drag it to the left or right and basically you are rotating the photo to level the horizon this and as you can see now the horizon is leveled let's go ahead and play around in the basic panel here everything you can do is about um, brightness the darkness shadows and highlights, whites and blacks, and you have the presence where you can sharpen the image. What you can do here, which is very interesting, is you can see the clipping parts of the image. What does that mean? So if you look up here in Instagram, in the, sorry, in the, in the Instagram, in the histogram, not a gram, you can click on the arrow on the left side, which is for the blacks, and the arrow on the right side, which is for the whites. And then usually it's going to show you which part of the images are overexposed, unexposed. We don't have any of those parts here in this image. This is very positive, but just for you to showcase if I increase the whites, it's going to show me the overexposed parts here with the red mark. And the same goes for the blacks, it's going to show me the blue marks. So if I hit J right now to deactivate the two arrows of the histogram, we can see that we lost a lot of details in the blacks and we have an overexposed sky. And to undo this, we double click on the blacks and the whites. So first thing what we're going to do here, we are going to increase the brightness of, this, of the subject here, which is the rock. So we have to increase the shadows, increase them all the way up to 100. So now we see many more details. We can see like the green parts of the rock and everything. And we are going to decrease the highlights. We can find them in the sky. So to get this guy a little bit stronger. What you can see right now is that the picture is way more flat right now. It lost a little bit of contrast while doing this. So we can increase the contrast here on this slide again, more or less to 17. That, that should be fine. Let's head over to the HSL color panel, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminance. So what we can do here, we can choose this toggle and click anywhere on the image to see which colors are in that specific pixel here, okay? Click and hold it, drag it to the left or right, and we can see on the right side we have blues and purple. So in the saturation, I want to increase the saturation of the C more or less to 25. Purple can stay on zero, and I'm going to do the same for the sky. No surprise, we have oranges and yellows. So I'm going to increase the saturation of the orange as well. And the yellows, you can see, if I desaturated, gets weaker, so, but I want to saturate that a little bit more. Then let's go to the detail. In the detail, you can sharpen the image in a little bit more. For example, if we zoom here, clicking on it on the loop, or we click Command and Plus, we can zoom in. You can see we have some noise here. If we sharpen this right now, we are getting more noise. As you can see, we have more little dots here on the pixels. So to reduce the noise, we increase the luminance on noise reduction. Going to increase it around 30. 
and right now you can see it's already softer. You can double click as well here up on the navigator to go back to the, to the fit. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to change specific parts of the image. For that, we are going to use a mask, which is a very useful tool. You can find that one up here over the basic panel, that circle. And basically in that image, it's very easy because we have three different parts. We have the foreground, which is our rock. We have the background, which is our sky. And we have the sea between our foreground and our background. So let's select each of them. Here in the new Lightroom, you can select the sky in the subject. Let's select the subject, which is our rock. All right, it takes a little bit. As you can see, now it's selected. Show overlay, which shows us the, the red color. If you hit O, you can deselect it. I select it again or you click here and you can change the color if you would like to you can change it to green or again i leave it at red and you can change the opacity basically in case you have some reds around and you want to see it more stronger put it 100 percent i leave it on 80. let's change the exposure of that rock i want it to be a little bit more brighter so be it like more or less on yeah, 0 0.6. I don't want to have it too bright because then it's not natural anymore. As you can see, we have some parts on the rock that are still like a little bit darker. This one is pretty fine, but here on the side, we select the uh, mask to be able to zoom in. You can see you have a, quite a difference here. So what we can do, we can select another mask. In this case, we use the brush, zoom in a little bit, hold the space bar. So in case you have the mask selected, you hold the space bar and then you can click again and move, move around. Here on the right side, we can change the size of our brush and the feather, which are the edges. If it's a little bit more gradient, the color on the edges. All right, leave it like that. I'm going to start painting and have it on auto mask, okay? Then it can recognize which part you are painting. And now we're going to increase the exposure a little bit. So now you can see what's going to happen. It's getting brighter as well. Don't want to exaggerate. Yeah, I think 0 0.7 looks very good. Now it's much more even. We call this mask side rock. Now what I'm seeing as well, we have some magenta in the rock here. Go back to the rock, mask one. Let's call this rock to bring it a little bit more to the tint. So get some greenish color in there. Look, if you go full in, full beast mode, it's way too much obviously. So I'm going to reset this. Minus 13. Maybe we increase the whites a little bit. So more or less 42. All right. So now let's select the sky. Sky selected. I would like to saturate the sky a little bit more, even though I did it already in the HSL panel. I want to have it still a little bit stronger. Okay. I can increase specifically the clarity of the sky. So it pops out a little bit more. The last part we still have to select is the C. For that, I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to brush over it. All right, everything is selected. I'm going to call this mask C. And as you can see here on exposure, now we are going to decrease it a little bit to create more contrast between the subject, which is our rock and the C. More or less minus three, 0 0.3 should be fine. What else can we do? We can go into the calibration, which works a little bit different or like quite different than the HSL panel. So the HSL panel focuses on one color, but the calibration focuses on the color, the percentage of a color in every pixel in the photo. It's not just changing the greens or the blues, if I'm going to change it here, it is going to change the greens that are as well in the yellows. So it's going to change the specific color in every pixel. In case if I drag this down right now here, the blue, you can see here the blue is going to change a bit. And since the blue gets a little bit out of the reds, the reds will be stronger here up in the sky. So let's just switch off and on again. Here we go, you can see it. And you have to be careful, we have some red here as well. So this red here in the, in the sea gets a little bit stronger as well. But I like it very much how it looks so far. Let's maybe tweak the rock a little bit again. I still want to have it a little bit more shiny. 0 0.7 looks good. A little bit more in the whites. I could still like brush over those parts here and make them a little bit more bright, but I leave that for now. Last but not least, maybe you've seen this. We have a little boat in here, just under the horizon. We can use the spot removal tool. It works like a brush. We just paint over it. And now Lightroom is going to suggest us another part of the image to replace the boat. 
done except this. If you look now at the before and after, we can see that it's a huge difference. You can still do some tweaks, but I think our image is great. It looks much better than before. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something and you found any value in this video, please consider the subscribe button, hit the like button, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.